Peters. It's Gina from Orchid and Opal Jewelry and Beads. I'm back with another tutorial today. I did a video recently called 10 Unique Ways to Use Gemstone Chips in Your Jewelry Making because I know I wasn't the only one who struggled with how in the world do you use these gemstone chips in creative ways besides just stringing them in ways that would really elevate how they look and make them look even better. So it was a very popular video. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. But by overwhelming demand, I had a lot of people asking me to do a tutorial on the rose quartz chip bracelet that I had showed on the video and I explained that it was similar to my last tutorial that I did which was a chevron stitch bracelet and I actually used the same techniques and principles to make this bracelet right here. Well I went on to make two more gemstone chip bracelets just like that one and I used some different things inside. For this one of course I used the little check glass bell flowers and for these down here I used what I had. I had a abundance of the tiger's eye left and I also had a container of labradorite that I'd gotten from beadbox bargains. I didn't have any more bell flowers that coordinated to do in between but I did use what I had like I said to kind of just get myself into the mindset of doing the tutorial and to kind of show you what other things you could use if you don't have the bell flowers. So these right here are actually the mushroom beads that came in the December 2018 dollar bead box. We all have gotten strands this month if you're a member of that monthly subscription and one of the strands I got was these mushroom beads. So they actually worked great for this application as well so if you got mushroom beads you might be able to use those. But uh, with those beads, the hole is kind of down at the bottom, and then it's got the big round top, like a mushroom. So they ended up fitting really well, and I thought they coordinated really well with the tiger's eye. And then on the back, once again, there's the ladder stitch with the 80 seed beads, five uh, seed beads per row. So that's done in tiger's eye and the mushroom beads. And then, like I said, I had a bunch of the Labradorite chips, so I was looking through my stash to see what I could find, and I had a lot of these little check glass stars that had this AB finish on them, and you know, Labradorite has that beautiful, I think it's called chatoyancy, where it's got those flashes of color. Well, the AB kind of does the same thing. The whole point of this bracelet design that I really liked was the check glass bell flowers were kind of a similar color as the pink rose quartz so you didn't really notice them in the center unless you're looking really closely so I wanted to do something similar with these and I really like how that turned out so it was a great way to use a unique shape in the labradorite bracelet as well because it can be a little bit challenging to use shapes like stars and things like that so there's just another idea for you but what I am going to do, because I like you guys so, so much, I'm actually going to take this entire bracelet apart because I don't have enough chips right now to make a whole new bracelet. And so I'm going to take it all apart and I'm going to reconstruct it for you on camera so you can learn exactly how I did it. And I really hope it helps you guys. All right, guys, so here's the materials that you'll need to make about a seven inch bracelet. You're going to need about 10 of these check glass bellflower beads or 10 of another bead of your choice that you want to go down the center of your bracelet. You're going to need size 80 and size 15 seed beads. I have my seed beads all mixed together here because like I said I did take this bracelet apart and there's no way that I was going to separate my 15s from my 80s but I think you understand. You will need gemstone chips and I don't have an exact number of grams on these. You can see that they do fill one of these little triangle holders and I did try to get the amount on the bbcraft.com website which is where these came from on how many was in each of those little containers of gemstone chip beads but I wasn't able to find the amount of grams but this is about the amount that you will need. You also need of course scissors, pliers. I love my wire guardians like I've said before. I'm going to use those on each end of the bracelet. I'm going to need a clasp and then some jump or split rings as well. And then, of course, my go-to, which is the six-pound fire line that I love to use for bead weaving. And I do have a 300-yard spool here because I use a lot, but it also comes in 50-yard and 125-yard spools. I will leave the links to a lot of these products below. So if you are interested in any of these things, then check that out. 
One other thing I want to mention is that it will make a seven inch bracelet once you have the clasp and your jump rings in place. The size portion that will be beaded, however, going from wire guardian to wire guardian is about five and a half inches. So if you do want a longer beaded portion, definitely take that into account and you'll want to make more rows. Of course, if you're using 10 of these bell flowers, I'm gonna have everything kind of spaced out evenly based on the number of ladder stitch rows. So you wanna keep that in mind. But like you can see here, once I have my jump rings and my clasp in place, it does come out to about seven inches. So I'm going to be using about between 10 to 12 feet of fire line today. This is a very thread thirsty pattern, so it does use a lot of fire line uh, compared to some other designs. So what I did on my last video with the chevron stitch is instead of going through with like five or six feet and then adding more fire line later, I actually put the whole 10 to 12 feet on my needle. Then I started working up my ladder stitch from about the middle of that thread. That way I had a super long tail and then I only had to work with the five or six feet with my right hand. So it was a lot more manageable and I didn't have to add on thread it worked out really, really well. So if you want to do that, go ahead and add on your 10 to 12 feet of fire line or whatever beading thread you're using and just start working up your ladder stitch in the middle of the thread, leaving a long tail. So I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle and I'll meet you back. All right, so I've moved some of my other materials out of the way. I flipped the Labradorite bracelet over so you could get an idea of what we're doing. So like I said, we're going to start out with our ladder stitch which is this stitch right here in the black seed beads, the Ados. And as you can see, the ladder stitch kind of just has these beads lined up right next to each other. That's what ladder stitch is. So this is not really a difficult pattern. So if you are newer to bead weaving, I definitely encourage you to give it a try. Ladder stitch is a very basic stitch that bead weavers will need to know. It's a great basis for a lot of bead weaving patterns. So definitely try it out. Don't be afraid. I do have my Ado seed beads here in clear, which may be a little bit difficult to see, and I apologize for that. I also have them mixed in with these little teeny silver 15-0 seed beads. And like I said, that's just because I took this bracelet apart, and I do have a few little threads straggling in here as well. But what we're going to do is we're just going to start out our ladder stitch. To start it out, you want to put on your needle twice as many beads for the first stitch as you're going to want for your rows going forward. So as you can see, we want rows of five seed beads. So that means we need to string on 10. So I'm gonna string on 10 of our eight O's. All right, so we have 10 of our eight O's on our needle. And like I said, I'm gonna pull this down about halfway and leave a super long tail that I can put a needle on later and start working back the other way so I don't have to add on thread later. It just adds some strength and plus I personally just don't like adding on thread. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> so if you don't mind it, then you do what works for you. This is what definitely works for me. So we had strung on 10 of our 8-0s and like you see here, I'm going to go back through just the first five. So put your needle back through the first five and pull and you should end up with something like this so your needle is coming out of this bead right here and you're going to go down through the next five right next to it and pull now your needles coming out down here to reinforce go back up through the five in this first row and pull Okay, and now go back down through those five in the second row one more time. Okay, once you get the hang of this, it's super easy, I promise. So now you're just going to add on five more of your 80 seed beads. So I have five more added on right here. Coming out of this 80 at the bottom, we're going to go through the opposite 80 on the top. So we're going to go through this 8 
There we go. So you should have something that looks like that. And you're coming out of this 80 right here. Go up the five 80 beads in this last row. And give it a pull, just like that. So you're coming up out of here. You want to add on five more 80s. Okay, and go through the opposite 8 on that last row and pull. And it sits those five right next to it, just like that. Coming out of this bead right here, this 8 on the top, just go down through those five that you just put on, pull nice and tight. So I think you're starting to get the idea and we're gonna make 40 rows. So it's important that you do 40 rows because I have the bell flowers kind of spaced out throughout the whole bracelet so that they're even. So we'll get to that when we get to it. Right now, just focus on making 40 rows of these 80 seed beads. Okay, so once again, we're coming out of the bottom and we're gonna go through the opposite, the top of that row of seed beads. So coming down out of this, we're gonna go up through the five we just put on. Add on five more. And go through the opposite direction of those five in the last row. And go down through the ones we just added. Okay, so we're on the right track here. We're going to do 40 of these and then we'll meet back. Alright, so now that you have your 40 rows and you see how some of the rows are a little bit wonky and not sitting exactly how you want, well they're going to tighten up once you go through the rest of your bracelet, so don't worry about that. Right now you're going to add the ending portion of one side of your bracelet where you're going to be adding your clasp. Like I said, I'm going to be using a wire guardian, so I'm going to be adding seven seed beads, then the wire guardian, then seven more seed beads and create a loop like that. If you don't have a wire guardian, you'll just be making a loop out of seed beads. So it's not gonna be as strong and as nicely finished as when you use a wire guardian, but it'll serve the purpose if you don't have one. So like I said, I'm gonna string on seven of the 15 O's Then I'm going to string on one end of my wire guardian. Then loop around. So I'm going to go through the other end of the wire guardian like that. And pull, make sure your thread sits in that little channel right there. And then add on seven more 15 O seed beads. Okay, and then I'm going to be going through these five 8-0s on the last row here. It's going to create our little loop on the end, just like that. And then we're going to reinforce it by going back through these beads and the wire guardian two more times. So that's just going to make it nice and strong. So one more time. Making sure the thread sits right in that channel, not off to the side, and going through my last row of 8 O's once again, making sure you don't go through that little 15-0 that's sitting there like it wants to. 
and that's where you're going to start adding the gemstones, the fun part, okay? So coming out of this seed bead here, the 8 on the end, you're going to then pick up your first 15 O's and gemstone beads to start your pattern. So something else I want to mention is that I've kind of gotten it figured out so that everything is staggered really nicely if you're using 10 bellflowers. And these are the rows that the bellflowers are going to be sitting on, which will make a little bit more sense in just a second. So the first part that we want to do to add our gemstones, the first step rather, is we want to pick up a 15-0, pick up a gemstone chip, pick up a 15-0, another gemstone chip, and then another 15-0. So you should have something like this on your needle. Coming out of this 8-0 right here, you're going to skip to the fourth row. So second row, third row, fourth row, and you're going to go through just the center bead of the fourth row. And what we're doing is we're creating kind of a chevron pattern with the gemstones. Now you won't really see that once the gemstones are strung on, but this really ends up working out well, I found. So let's complete the other side of our chevron. Let's pick up another 15-0, another gemstone bead, another 15-0, one more gemstone bead, and another 15-0. So once again, you have something like this on your needle, and you want to, I like to flip it over and take a look at where I'm going. So we started out over here, we're going to end up going back through those five seed beads, the 8-0s, in that first row. And once again, just try to avoid going through that little 15-0 that's sticking right there. Okay, so do that and give it a nice pull. And you should have something like this on the front. So flipping it back over, coming out of this row, just go back down through the row of five right next to it. Okay. You see how that kind of cinches it up as well? So that's pretty nice. Then, like I have in my little on my little piece of paper right down here, you're going to be putting your first bellflower on row number three. After row number three, you're going to be putting one on every fourth row. Okay? But you're going to start out on row number three. So we're coming out of row two right now, right here. And we want to go just through the first three seed beads of the third row, but point your needle out front. So go through those three seed beads, but poke your needle out to the front, kind of in the middle of those gemstone chips you put on. So you're coming out of there. Go ahead and string on a bellflower or whatever other bead you want to use for your accent. Then I'm going to put a little 15-0 right in the center of that bellflower. So it's going to sit like that. And then I'm going to go back through the bellflower only, not back through the seed bead because that would just take the seed bead off. And pull it nice and tight to where the bellflower is sitting right on top of the eight O's. And it's kind of hard to see. Okay, so remember how we went through the three seed beads, one, two, three, poked our needle up, put our bellflower on. Well, we came out of, if I can give you a best visual I can here, we came out of this third seed bead here. We're going to go back through that seed bead and then through the other two eightos next to it. So basically what that's doing is that is securing the bellflower to this seed bead in the middle. So we came out through this side, put our bellflower out on, and we're going back around in the 8 on the opposite side just to secure it, as well as the next two 8 in that row, in that third row. OK, 
okay? And now your bell flower is secured to the center seed bead on the third row. Now we're coming out of the third row right here and we're ready to add on some more of our gemstone chips. So I'm going to set this down, add on a seed bead, a gemstone chip, a seed bead, and a gemstone chip, followed by one more seed bead. So you should have that. Then you're going to skip down two rows from the row that you had put your first gemstones through. So see how you went through that middle bead of this row? Skip over this one, go to the second one down through the middle of that row, through that seed bead. So this is a little bit different than the chevron bracelet that I did previously just because these beads are bigger and I had to figure out what worked. So then you're ready to complete that part of the chevron with some more seed beads. All right, so once again, string on a 15-0, a gemstone, a 15-0, another gemstone and a 15-0. Flip over your work, and you can see that you are coming out of this row right here, because you can see that little 15-0 that's sticking up. So basically the third row, that's where you strung on the opposite side. So we're going to be going through the third row, all of those five seed beads, to complete the chevron pattern of gemstone chips on that side. Okay? Then like we did before, go all the way down through those next five eight-o seed beads, which would be the fourth row. Okay, and then instead of adding on a bell flower on the fifth row, you're going to go through these three seed beads, one, two, three, poke your needle toward the front. So you're going to do that. And you'll just kind of keep everything tightening up as you go. It's going to be a little loose and a little funky as you go, but don't worry. So you're coming out of this middle seed bead on the fifth row. Instead of adding another bellflower, you'll just add a gemstone bead. And basically do the same thing you did as when you added a bellflower. So you're coming out of that third bead on this side. And you're just going to go back through the opposite side to secure a gemstone chip right there. So just make sure it pops right into place how you want it. You know, take your time. Make sure your thread isn't looping around other gemstone chips, but it's just getting it popped into place there. And that just fills in the little hole that's created. Then go through the next two eight O's that follow that one, two on that row. So this is not difficult. It just might be a little bit harder to see exactly on camera than maybe some other tutorials, but just take your time. Start over if you have to. I certainly did when I first started doing this just to get it right, but I promise you with a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience, you'll be able to get it. All right, so you're coming out of what is now the fifth row. You're going to add on more gemstone beads. So pick up 15-0. Gemstone 15-0, gemstone 15-0, and then go through, get my thread situated, then you're going to go through the second row after the one you just went through with your gemstone. So we went through that one. We're going to skip over this one and go through the second one after that, just the middle bead. Okay, let's finish that off on the other side. 15 0, gemstone, 15 0, 
gemstone 15 now. Let's flip it over and we need to complete this row here. So go through all five of those. Make sure they pop into place on the front like you want them to. Okay, go through all five in the row directly next to it. And just keep an eye on your thread, make sure it doesn't get caught on any of these crazy gemstones. And now we're on row seven, which you can see is where we're going to be adding another bellflower. We're on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're coming out of row number six at the bottom. We're going to go just through the first three seed beads, but make sure our needle points toward the front, just like we did before. And let's add on another bellflower. Put on a bellflower in it, 15 0. I just like the way that finishes off the bellflower, plus, it keeps the bellflower in place. Okay, so you have that situated right there, and just skip over that 15 0, only going back through the bellflower. Then the opposite end of that 8 0, plus the two following it in that same row. and then pull it nice and tight and there you go it's sitting right in the center of row number seven okay now we're ready to add on another gemstone row 15-0 gemstone fifteen o gemstone and by the way just want to mention I do have a Patreon account, so if you do enjoy these free tutorials that I put out for you guys, please feel free to follow me over on Patreon and maybe consider becoming a patron of my account. You can start out at just a dollar level. There's a dollar, a five dollar, and a ten dollar level. But what that does is help support my tutorials, helps me create, uh, continue to create more content, continue to be able to get the materials I need to do that, the equipment I need. It also gets you some exclusive discounts to my online shop to buy some of my finished jewelry pieces. So if you are interested in that, you can of course follow me free of charge, see all the same tutorials that I'm putting out on YouTube. But I do hope to reach a level at some point where I will be able to put out exclusive tutorials just for patrons in addition to providing some of the exclusive discounts to my shop. So you can check that out. All the details are down below the video in the information section. I have a link to that and I appreciate your support. All right, so I added on another section of gemstone beads and we need to go back through this row right here. And then make sure everything is situated. So it's starting to come together. I really like how this is coming together, just like it did before. And I didn't mean to go through that little 15 so let me go back through there. There we go. And just like we did before, we're gonna go down through that entire row right next to it. This just strengthens the bottom too and makes sure everything's kind of sitting where it's supposed to. And we're going to be in row number nine right now. We're going to go just through those first seed beads in row number nine, poking our needle up through the center. And instead of adding a bellflower at this point, we're going to add on a gemstone chip just to fill in that hole. So I typically add my smaller gemstone chips. You know, they vary in size quite a bit. So usually I'll use my smaller ones for these center parts, but you don't have to. So I'm going to go back through that third seed bead and then through the two right next to it to complete our row and make sure the gemstone chip pops right where I want it because the thread can get a little crazy when it's wrapping all around these gemstone beads. So I definitely recommend doing the other 
tutorial of the basic chevron stitch using either fire polish beads or seed beads first before attempting to do the gemstone chip bracelet if you are a newbie. If you are a very experienced beater, experienced bead weaver, then just give yourself a little bit more time and patience to do the first one until you get the hang of it, but I'm sure you'll be fine. All right, okay, so we're coming out of this next row where we're ready to put on another row of gemstone chips. And as you can see, this little pattern that's starting to form where we're ending up doing gemstone chips on every other row. So you see these little 15 O's right here that are ending up on every other row. And that's kind of how you know if you are on the right track is if you see these little 15 O's every other row. So I'm gonna continue on. Okay, so we're adding our next gemstone chips and 15 O's. We went through that one, so we're gonna skip over this row and go to the next one down. Second one down, just like that. And finish that off. Flip it over to see where we need to be. Should be going through all these five. Pushing these toward the front, pulling it tight, going through all five of the row below, then going through just the three of row number 11 and poking our needle toward the front. And we're ready to add our third bell flower. So I'm just going to pull that all the way down, pop on another 15 0 go down just through the bell flower, skipping over the 15 0 going through that 8 0 on the opposite side, and then the following two 8 0s in that same row, pulling it nice and tight, making sure the bell flower is sitting right in there. So we've done three bell flowers, like I said. These are the rows the bell flowers are going to be on. And then every other odd row is where you're going to be adding just a small gemstone chip just in the same manner as the bell flower that's going to fill in those little gaps. So let's keep going till we're close to the end and I'll show you how to finish off the bracelet. Hey you guys, I'm back a little early because I thought it might be helpful to show you this. As you can see, I've gotten to the point in my thread on this side where I'm going to want to tie it off and then start my thread on the opposite side where my tail is, the super long tail, and weave back to where I was to start again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and knot off my thread here, which is as far as I could get with the thread that I had on my right hand side. So I'm making a little half hitch knot there, going through a few beads here, and then I'm gonna make another half hitch knot here go through some more beads. I'm just following the thread path, making another little half hitch knot right there, going through some more beads and so on, which is how I would normally end my thread when I'm bead weaving anyway. Just weave the thread back in Okay, so I'm just going to weave my thread back in like that. I'm going to cut off this portion and then I'm going to get the other end of my thread and put my needle on. Like that. And then as you can see, I'm starting from this point. I'm just going to weave back all the way to where I left off. And that's how I do this method of bead weaving this bracelet without having to add more thread on, you know, worrying about tying another piece of thread on with a knot that I may not be 
as comfortable with as if I just could get away with using one single piece of thread. It's just stronger that way. So I'm just weaving back up and down, up and down till I get to the point where I started or where I left off rather and then I'll continue down my bracelet. So I just wanted to show you what I was doing real quick if you're doing the same method as I am. Alright guys, so I'm back because I'm almost done. I am putting on my last row of gemstone beads, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Alright, and then we'll add on our next wire guardian get this bracelet all finished up. But It's looking really good, and I hope yours is too. So you can see that the end might curl up just a tiny bit. Don't worry about it. Alright, so I'm going to go through the middle. Make sure those gemstones go on the top like they're supposed to. I'm going to add my final two gemstones and seed beads. And then we'll just have to add our very last bellflower. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over and go back through this row. And then down through the next row like we've been doing and then go through the first three seed beads in this row making sure the needle goes toward the center which this row might be a little bit tricky so I'm actually going to go through the seed beads and then push my needle through the center like that and I'm going to put on my last bellflower and my last 15-0 right there. And go through the third seed bead and the next two seed beads to pop it into place. Just like that. So you can see how this is this has come together just like that. There's the back. And we're going to make sure we're positioned to put on our either seed bead loop or seed beads and wire guardian to finish off the other side of the bracelet. So currently I'm coming out of this seed bead right here. I'm going to go through the five on the very end. Like that. So we're in position to add our final seed beads and our clasp. So let's add on seven of our 15 O's. Then let's put on our wire guardian, putting on one side of it there, and then we're going to go through the other side of it, like that, putting on seven more 15 O's. Then going through all those last row of five 80 seed beads again to complete our little loop like that and we're going to go through this two more times to make it really really strong Actually, going to go ahead and tie a half inch knot right here to get that started 
like to make at least three of those when I'm ending a piece as I'm weaving the thread back through. Okay, so this is the third time we're going through the uh, wire guardian in the end. Okay, and now I'm going to make another half hitch knot right here. Then I'm going to go down through this next row of 80 seed beads and I'm going to make another half hitch knot right here. I'm going to go down through the next row. Make another little half hitch knot. And depending on how much thread, you can weave through the whole thing again if you wanted to. You really don't have to. And I'm just going to end it by going through this row right here. Okay, we'll cut off our thread. And so there's our bracelet, it looks great. Let's go ahead and add on our clasp. And I already had my jump rings attached from when I had this done before. So, like I said, I don't have to do that portion, but you just go ahead and add whatever kind of clasp you want to add. There's one side. You can see I had to grab my... Uh, split ring pliers because I'm using split rings for this one. Okay. Popping that side on. Just like that. So once again, I love how it came out. Really happy with it. Really happy with this whole design. Like I said, I've seen the chevron stitch done. I've never seen it done with gemstone chip beads. So Hope this was really helpful for you guys. I hope it gave you another great idea on what to do with these sometimes hard to use gemstone chip beads and really gives you a way to kind of elevate how they look and take advantage of the texture that they give. So feel free to leave me a comment or a question below. I love to hear from you. I'd love for you to send me any pictures of jewelry you've made from my tutorials to my Facebook page or to my email at Orchid Opal Jewelry at gmail.com because I always love to know that these tutorials are helpful for you and easy to follow. That's very important to me. So as usual, I'll be back soon with more tutorials just like this from a range of projects from beginner to more intermediate using all different materials. I hope you enjoy making and wearing this bracelet and as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to see more of my videos. And check out the video description section to follow along on all of my social media handles and check out my new website and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching!